all planned out. Amen. 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 That was said to impromptu, but I thank the Lord. How God called me young because they're strong. Yes. You, know, you can never underestimate children. Amen. Yes, they are hope for tomorrow. Amen. Yes, Amen.
doing great and wonderful things. Yes, yes, yes. I want to inter iterate that, how great God is. He's great in all the heavens and in all the earth. I'm just, I'm just reminded by the song we just sing in our junior choir, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. They just sing, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Amen. Because God is super great. Amen. If I can say that. Yes. Amen. And we're talking about great expectations. Now you say, Sister Sherry, where are you coming from? I'm so tickled and, and excited about all the young people I see on today. Love them. Amen. <laughs> Children are a blessing. Yes. Amen. It's yes. going to fit into the message we do. Amen. But, but I got this inspiration of the beginning of the message from the words of Dorothy Dixon, our pastor, before she passed. When she was in hospice, she was sitting by her bedside, and she was prophesying even then, Amen. Yeah. prophet to the core. She said this, while lying in hospice, amen, she said, a quote unquote, hold on to your great expectation, realization and manifestation. Because it's about to happen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hold on to your great expectation, realization, and manifestation. Because it's about to happen. Good. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. All the good you've been believing for, all the good you've been praying for, it's about to happen. Those were her words before she left. And she gave almost everybody a word that was around her bedside. But I'm going to tell you, I received that word. I believe that word. Amen. Hold on to your great expectations. I guess everybody doesn't have one. But I know I have one. <laughs> Hold on to your great expectations. Realization, realize it. See it in your mind. See it in your spirit. See it in your soul. And then wait for it to manifest, because it says, because it's about to happen. And that sounds like Habakkuk 2 and 4, wait for it, because it will surely, what, come to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the word, if it's of God, it can back it up. It can match it up with the word of scripture. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that sound. Uh -huh. That sound. Amen. So here we go. And then over to the book of Job. And you know, in order to see God do something good, you had to come from a place that was not so good. Come on. Hallelujah. In order to be thankful and grateful, you had to be in a place that was dark, perverted, busted, disgusted. Amen. But how many know that we come from a mighty, a mighty long way? God is bringing us to a place of gratefulness, great expectation, realization, and manifestation. And we're going to hold on to it yes. until it manifests. Yes. Hallelujah. Because yes. it's about to happen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And I'm quite sure Job is one. It's like the minister read. And then there was a man in the land of Ur whose name was Job. And that man was perfect. Everybody that lives today is not perfect. Amen. Amen. The Bible talks about a couple of people that were perfect in the scripture. Amen. And this is one. And he said he was upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil, or he hated what was evil. Amen. And there were born unto him huh, seven sons. That is kind of perfect. Just seven sons. Amen. And three daughters. Hallelujah. Amen. Three for the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 He had perfect children. Glory to God. And then it says, and how his substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men in the east. You know, there was none to compare to him where he was from, where he lived on the corner of the earth. He was great in his work. He was great in his substance and in his wealth. Amen. It said all the men that know that hang with God all had something great. Amen. As we were going through the Sunday school lesson today, that God said, oh, we got a wonderful exegesis of the word in Sunday school. Amen. And what I found out is that, oh yeah, every disciple of Jesus was not poor. Okay. 
all of them had some kind of business, amen, they had some kind of thing going on, uh-huh. some kind of niche on there, but anybody that was not, anybody that was outside of God, they really needed God, amen, to bring them blessings, and everybody that hooks up to God automatically is blessed, hallelujah, for some people it might take a process, amen, may not happen overnight, but for most people, if you know, like for instance, even in the Old Testament, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were rich. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We know that in the, you know, the story of Lot, God had to separate the nephew. Yeah. Amen. Because he had so much wealth. Amen. God told, amen, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, we're going to separate Lot. Amen. Noah, because they were so, they had so much. So amen. Much. And, and he said, watch who's driving between our family. Amen. So you go over there and I'll go over here. Amen. And Lot went over there to Sodom. Amen. But God is good. And if you stay with God, you get something. Yeah. Amen. A great man of God told me one time. Amen. He said, some people don't know how to stay with God long enough to get anything. Right. Okay. And then on the other side of that corner, some people don't stay long enough with the devil to get anything either. They go back and forth. And you can't go, you can't, you can't date God and All then right. date the All devil. Right. You got to make up your mind who you're going to serve. If you're going to serve God, obey him. Amen. If you're going to serve the devil, stay with him. Amen. But they can't even make up their mind. Because the devil will never treat nobody right. <laughs> He'll be with you for a minute, then he'll leave you with your hand in the bag. Oop, you got caught. <laughs> That's how the devil is. Amen. But I'd rather stay with God. Everything about God is going up. Hallelujah. Everything about God is going up. And your end is even blessed. Hallelujah. Not just your beginning. But he sees your end from the beginning. Hallelujah. That's why he's our Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. The beginning and the end. Great expectations. That's all we expect is something great. That's all that's on our mind is something pure, something prospering, something beautiful, something wonderful, something that's blossoming. Amen. That's all about God. He does everything good. When he made the earth, he said all that. After he made it, he said, hmm. Everything I made was good. The sun is good. The moon is good. The stars are good. Everything he touches is good. And then even in Psalm 21, and then whatever you touch shall not wither, because everything that's a part of God is good. The word of God says over and over and over how good God is. Amen. And so I just want to bring that out as we go into the scripture on today. We find out that Job was a good man. He was a saved man. He was a righteous man, the Bible says. One that feared God and hated evil. And that even though he was doing good, how many of the devil hates it when you're saved? And that the devil wants you back. Hallelujah. He wants you to be on his side, be on his team. Amen. And so if he can't get you back, then he'll talk about you. He'll try to pinpoint you, target you. Amen. He said, I bet you if you let me touch him, he'll curse you and die. Amen. But God said, don't touch him. You can touch everything around him. But don't put your hands on Job. All right, all right. Amen. We find out as we look all through the scripture here what went through Job's life. Amen. It says, and uh, I'll read part of that again in the fourth verse. It says, and the sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with him. And it was so when the days of their feasting, not fasting, <laughs> When the day of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, he separated them, and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned, oh, and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually, oh, he said, God, I don't want to. God forbid that any time, any day that my sons have disobeyed you, Lord, that they said the wrong word, that they sinned, oh God. He says, I'm going to, oh God, give an offering. That's what we're talking about in Sunday school. I'm going to give a temporary uh, antidote, a fix, amen, and make sure that their souls are saved. Oh God, peradventure that anything negative or bad would happen to my children. Oh, he did like a good parent would. He saw after the safety and the protection and the blessing of his children. And so we go on, praise God. It says here, then after he said he did offering unto God continually, in that fifth verse on the last bit, it says, Satan asked to test Job. Now, this is the part that a lot of saints get kind of 
faint-hearted when we read the story of Job. But how many know that God, it, oh my God, let me rephrase this. How would a teacher know what's in you except you take the test? All right, all right. How would you know where you rank except you take the test? Right. How good am I in math? Right. How good am I in reading? Right. How good am I in science? You won't know except you take that test. Mm -hmm. And so here it is in your walk with God. Sometimes there's trials and tribulations. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Sometimes there's testing yeah. times. Yeah. It don't mean God don't love you. Yeah. But then this is how what they say the devil does play the devil's advocate. Yeah. Oh, he tries you. He tests you. Yeah. And then he says, God said, told you uh, they didn't have nothing to their salvation. I told you they would fall if you allow me to let them tip and dip. Uh, I told you uh, if you give me a chance, they would act like they forgot all about God. But how many know that God bragged on us? Uh, he said, that's my son. Uh, I know he loves me. Uh, that's my daughter. Uh, She's been running for me a long time. And she ain't got tired yet. Well, the devil will try you. Even still, he said, I allow you, just allow me one chance, one time, wonderful. I'll show you what's in them. Hallelujah. And so the time went on. And the sixth verse said, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came along also. Oh my God, among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered, and he asked in a board meeting. <laughs> it was a board meeting with all the angels, and it says Satan came to <laughs> answer the Lord and said, "From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it." <laughs> and the Lord said unto Satan, "Has thou considered my servant Job?" In other words, God is bragging on him. Oh yeah, he loves me. Hey, man, he's not gonna backslide. He loves me too much. Oh my God, and that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man. One that fears God and eschewed evil. See, that's what we just said. And the Lord let you know that he's restating it because he's bragging on us. Hallelujah. And then it says here in the ninth verse, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Don't, don't, don't fear God for naught or for nothing. Has thou not made an hedge about him? No one, well, you're protecting him. What do you expect? You got him all boxed in and in a bubble, so to speak. Uh, that can't nobody touch him. Uh, of course he's going to be blessed. But let's go on. And then it says here, uh, and about his house and about all that he has on every side. He's looking at all his assets. He said, well, Joel got it going on. He's got that. And, and oh, yeah, he's got this. And praise the Lord for his assets. Hey, hey, hey. He's got this. He's got that. Uh, thou hast left the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put thou forth thine hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. Now look at here, Job. It don't even know what's going on. He didn't even know that there's a meeting going on. Oh my God, that, that God and the devil are just going, just, just discussing him. Oh, and all the while he's giving offerings. He said, thank you, Lord. Well, I'm going to bless you. Here's a hundred there. Here's a two hundred offering there. Here's a, here's a, a sheep offering, a wave offering. Come on, you know how they back in those days. They didn't have the green bag. They just gave what they had. And God blessed them like they gave a thousand dollars or a million dollars back in those days. And so God is saying, oh my God, I know he will not curse me. And the, and the devil is saying, well, you move your head to protect it on him. I guarantee you he'll curse you and die. And then we know the Bible says Job did not curse God. But let's go forth and say here, huh? In the 11th verse, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. He says, even to your face, God. He's going to curse you to your face. Oh, my God. Look how you love God. Even the saints that are here today. But that's what the devil wants you to do. Huh? He wants you to go with a towel. Huh? He said, oh, God is not worth it. Huh? I've been serving God all my life. Huh? I've been waiting for my ship to come in. Huh? I've been giving all I've been giving. Huh? I gave 100 last week. Huh? I gave 200 this week. Huh? And I'm still praying. Huh? I'm still waiting. Huh? And my ship still hasn't come in. <laughs> oh, Lord. Huh? And so it says here, he, he, he said in the 12th verse, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, 
also put not forth thine hand. Yes, so Lord. Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Yes, he told the Lord, so no one, he gave him okay. He said, I'll let you take all that he has. Yes. But I know that, that I know 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 that God talking. God said, I know without a shadow of a doubt yes, that even though you touch whatever he has, he will not throw in the towel. Yes, and he certainly will not curse me. Yes, but right. you see that was the call. Yes. For the devil, huh? he had some friends. <laughs> uh, Job had some friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of us got friends? How many people have them? <laughs> friends, <laughs> do you have them? Do you have them? Do you have them? Do you have them? Well, watch out some same friends. <laughs> they say they love you, huh? they say they got your back. <laughs> oh, those may be the ones <laughs> that when you are looking for support. <laughs> Life. 
time because God answers him in the joy of his heart. And when I know what I know that I gave you, I gave you what you wanted, and then I gave you a little tip of a blessing, things you never even asked for. He said to you, that's the gift of God. He said, I got more, I got one shoe to wear on Monday. Day, huh? when the sons of his daughter 
brothers uh, were eating and drinking uh, wine uh, in their elders' brother's house. Uh, and there came a messenger uh, unto Job. Uh, and began to say, uh, the oxen were plowing uh, and the asses feeding uh, beside them. Uh, and the savings fell upon them uh, and took them away. Uh, yea, uh, they, had, they were slain. Uh,
do. He draws the peace of God. He draws the grace of God. He draws the mercy of God. And now he brings the greatness of God.
right before the Lord and one that feareth not and is sure as evil and he still and still he holdeth, he holdeth fast to his integrity. Yes. Let me break right there. Integrity. What is integrity? I'm not talking about R-E-S-P-E-C-T. I'm talking about integrity. I'm not talking about loyalness, loyalty. But I'm talking about integrity. I'm talking about when the lights are down low. I'm talking about when the doors are shut. If you can't see me and I can't see you, what will God find you doing? God takes away, 
and all that he gives is good, even though it's evil. And all this did not Job thin with his lips. Now check that. His lips. Only he did not sin with his lips. But what was in his heart? If we go through all 43 chapters, we just go all the way to the end, you would find out that iniquity was found in Job. Yeah, a perfect and upright man, one that is you as evil. But if you go between the pages, you find there's what you call, it's a, a lot of poetry back and forth. Prophecy even mixed in there. The young man, Eliu, a young prophet. They don't call him a prophet. Eliphaz had his word to say. This one had his word to say. And because he was the youngest, as we know, young people have to wait. Amen. Because you are not the elder, you cannot bust your chest out and start speaking like you're grown. But he said, if I can speak, he begins to speak on the cause for Job. And one thing he began to say, now let's just go to the 32nd chapter of Job. You know, I mean, it's so much, I can't, I don't, time will not allow us to go through the whole discourse of Job. <laughs> I love this chapter. See, how you love that? Because it's talking about real life. Things that people have really gone through. Amen. Everybody. You hear Minister Sister? Oh, come on. Everybody. Was it good? No. No. Here we go. So these three men seek to answer Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. Then was kindled the wrath of Eliel, the son of Barakiel, the Buziah, of the kindred of wrath. Against Job was his wrath kindled because he justified himself rather than God. Now when God speaks, which is what the mouth of God is, an oracle, he does not give him all the props and the and, uh, and uh, uh, everything that's making him look like he's a shining knight. But what he says is just. He speaks the mind of God. And when God speaks, he speaks justly, whether you like it or not. So with yes, Sarah, your report card this week is Monday you started off good, Tuesday you prayed good, Wednesday you prayed good, Thursday you messed up. You need to get back to read my scripture. Friday was good, Sunday, and so on and so forth. God is like that. He's just. He gives you the good with the bad. Amen. And so this is what Elio is doing. He's saying, this is what you did on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Oop, you slipped on Saturday. Here we go. Then was kindled the wrath of Elio, the son of Barakiel, Barakiel the Buzia, of the kindred of Ram against Job was his wrath kindled because he justified himself. Justification. Now, if you're perfect, you don't have to justify. He justified himself rather than God, his self. He didn't curse God, but then something began to form in his heart. Some things began to be discovered in this perfect man's heart. Also against his three friends was his wrath kindled. So the prophet was also looking at his three miserable comforter friends. He said, uh, because they had found no answer. So yet they were just subjecting, the, well, he possibly did this. Job possibly did that, and he possibly slipped and did that. And so this is what the prophet said. They found no answer, and yet had condemned Job. Now, Elio had waited till Job had spoken. He said, Elio waited till Job had spoken. He's a wise little young prophet. You see, the word prophet, a lot of people think that it means he's so deep. No, it's God, you become a God gift, an oracle. You're just a vehicle like this microphone. I'm speaking through it, and it comes out to you as sound. That's an oracle. God is speaking through me to you. And here's what the prophet said. Now, Elo had waited till Job had spoken because they were elder than he. Like I said before. And when Elio saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was 
Tim he just couldn't wait. I said, Ellie. <laughs> so Eliu, the son of Rachel the Buziite, answered and said, I am young. And ye are very old. They probably were. Wherefore I was afraid and does not show mine opinion. I said, days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. So you would think because you're old, you have wisdom. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Now, Mama, tell me, read, stay, and live in the book of Proverbs. Great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. Not all because they got a certain age means they're wise and understand judgment. Therefore, I said, hearken to me, I also will show mine opinion. In other words, I'm not going to talk to you guys. I'm not going to talk to Job, because there's his story, there's her story, then there's God's story. Right. Amen. Like I said, what side are you on? I don't know y'all side. I'm on God's side. Right. Amen. Right. That's what he's saying. Therefore, I said, hearken to me. I also will show my opinion. Behold, I waited for your words. I gave ear to your reason. Will she search out what to say? Yea, I attended unto you. In other words, I listened to you, so listen to me. Behold, there was none of you that convinced Job or that answered his words. No, you all did not answer his words. You just, you just pointed a finger and said, you probably did this and you probably did that, Job. That's why all this bad stuff has happened unto you. But the 13th verse says, lest he should say we have found our wisdom. God thrusts him out. Thought, I mean, thrusts him down, not, not man. Now he has not directed his words against me. Neither will I answer him with your speeches. Because in other words, they were just messy. They were amazed. They answered no more. In other words, he put them to shame. They left off speaking. They were done. When I had waited, for they spake not, but stood still and answered no more. I said, I will answer also my part. I also will show my opinion. I, for I am a fool, I am full of matter. The spirit within me now is constrained of me. Behold, my belly is as wine which has no vent. In other words, he's ready to burst. It is ready to burst like new bottles. I will speak that I may be refreshed. I will open my lips and answer. This is actually speaking of the spirit of a prophet. That's why a prophet, when they had something to say, they came and they just say it. And he said, I will open my lips and answer. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. Neither let me give flattering, flattering titles unto man. Oh, prophet, oh, wonder one. <laughs> Son of a man. For I know not to give flattering titles. And so doing my maker would soon take me away. A prophet fears God. So they know flattering is not going to work. Where first, Job, I pray thee in the very third chapter now. I pray thee, hear my speeches, okay, and hearken to all my words. Behold, now I have opened my mouth, my tongue has spoken in my mouth, my words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. If thou canst answer me, set thy words in order before me, stand up. Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's seed. I also in God's seed. Who's in God's seed? A prophet. I also am formed out of the clay. So I'm a man like you're a man. God made me like he made you. Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid, neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee. Hold that thought for a minute. Uh, 30, 33 and 7. I want to go over to the fourth chapter when he says that. And there's a word in here that lets you know there's angels. Job 4 and 13. Now this is what happens when a prophet sleeps, and even if you're not a prophet, he speaks to everybody, kings, judges, everybody that has an ear for to hear what the Spirit says and get it clear. This is what happens. 13th verse, in thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on men, fear came upon me, and trembling which made all my bones to shake. Then a spirit passed by before my face. The hairs of my flesh stood up. Like you saw a ghost. <laughs> I, it stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eye. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man 
be more just than God? Shall a man be more put, I mean, Peter, than his maker? The angel let him know, you can be all right, babe. You think there's nothing wrong with you, but I got you. And you're going to come out, you're going to find out. So, okay, back, and that, you can read the rest of it later if you want to. But I'm going back to the 33rd chapter. We got to get ready to wrap it up. I'm sorry. You know, like you said, can't tell it all, getting late. Right, part one and two. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, 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 I need to close up shop right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Let's tell you what. We'll do part two. Amen. I'm not going to be able to finish that because I don't have time. In this message, if I could just do a, 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 just a small cap of it, just yeah, a summary. summary, thank you, yeah, there you go. synopsis. Okay. What I want to say is that after the angel spoke to him, then if you go to the next chapter, you see where he begins to really open up, pour out. So where were you when God flew the stars? And then after a while, John probably started speaking, and then it shows where God started speaking. We know that already. Many of us in Bible college, we know we've been there. But I just want to give you some sound words from Job. Job 39, 19 to 24. Do you give the horse his might? This is part of his question, you know, his speaking. Do you clothe his neck with a mane? Do you make him leap like the locust? His majestic snorting is terrifying. His paws in the belly and exalts in his strength. He goes out to meet the weapons, like a horse on run from no war. He laughs at fear and is not dismayed. He does not turn back from the sword. Upon him rattle the quiver, the flashing spear, the, and the javelin with fierceness and rage. He swallows the ground. You know horses can do that. He can, because the wind is just dust and fly. He cannot stand still at the sound of the trumpet. And we're talking about the power of a horse in battle. 21 says, agree with God and be at peace, thereby good will come to you. Receive instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. And I'm going to stop right there. What I want to say, when it was all done, iniquity, meaning pride. Anybody ever heard of righteous pride? You can be righteous and proud of the fact that you are righteous. Pride was found in sin. But even through all that, love and kindness, you know God restored everything Job lost plus more. Mm -hmm. yeah. The sons, the daughters, mm -hmm. the land, the cattle, and on and on. God restores. I don't want to leave you on sad No, God's going to give you that because we have what? Great expectation. Hallelujah. And realization and manifestation because it shall surely come to pass. You know that. Amen. So with that, we're going to seal it. Lord, we thank you for your word on today. We thank you for the manifestation of your word, of realization. Great expectations are coming. God, you said we've been through the fire, we've been through the rain, but you have not let it sin us. There's no smell of fire on us, and the water has not overflowed us, and here we are because of the grace of God. And we're just waiting in line for great expectations. And God, if we're at the back of the line, you know how to turn and flip it to where we are now at the front of the line. So, Lord, with that, we say thank you. Thank you and we humbly wait and we say thank you. We're patient and we say thank you. Hallelujah. You turn our morning into dancing, our tears into stars. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. Like, no, we're not going to complain, but we say thank you. Hallelujah. but a thanksgiving and praise knowing that you are great and you do great things. And all that we said, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Agape love, we love you. Be blessed. And that God's got your back. There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I want to also, before I end that note, this coming weekend, the week of the 10th through the 11th, we're going to be in our prayer summit, annual free prayer summit, and slash revival. Amen. The 10th through the 11th. I don't have a flyer. Anybody got a flyer with you? Amen. I left them in the car. But we want you to know that revival, prayer revival is on at 4716 West Lisbon Avenue, as Dr. Dixon would have it. And we have illustrious speakers. We have evangelist, first lady, 
Dr. Amen or McGahee. Amen. We have evangelist, international evangelist, evangelist Queen Kelly. Amen. We have, amen, anointed singers coming. Come and be blessed. Let the Lord bless you in this revival. Love you and bless you. God bless you. Believe and wait for great expectations. It's coming your way. God bless you.